around uh, hall one this is the huawei uh, arena it is uh, as you can see massive we've got the wide angle camera on here because um i just can't fit it in otherwise it goes all the way down there to the wall and then goes uh all the way to the other end of the hall it is that large as you can see as per last year there's a uh, various lovely ladies at the front dressed in uh, gear from around the world and back there we zoom in a bit back there you can see uh, the area where everybody is heading to meanwhile across the way in the hall while we got China Mobile um, you can see they've got a a large screen here and this is a little robot here who's uh, shaking his left hand quite a bit here talks as well every now and then and these little eyes moving can you see me can you see me dude yes he's looking at me over here there's a range of their phones um, the one that I love the most is this one here it's the Mi Mix I must admit look at that screen I cannot get over that screen. And we had a look at the LG T6 and we all went wow at the um, rounded corners and how close to the edge of the chassis it was. But this uh, was actually announced last October. It has no earpiece, it has a ceramic um, vibrating top section, which is how it gets the sound into your ears. This is the Mi Mix. It's got a massive screen and it runs Android 6. And as you can see here, I just I just cannot get over the screen. Obviously, this is the uh, Chinese version, so it's going to have a Chinese um, sort of vibe to it here. We've got the Mi Home, Mi Live, the Beidou map on there as well. It's a very well-built, very glossy, nice-to-hold um, phone. I must admit, I think I might be buying one of these. Uh, good dits. Yeah, this company's called Hawk Tech, and they uh, do lots of repeaters because obviously your uh, mobile signal's not going to go everywhere. Uh, and these little gadgets here will boost your signal out, and they can go into buildings, particularly old-style buildings with lots of brickwork, and uh, makes makes your signal go further. Basically, across the way, we've got lots of uh, dishes for sending signals via microwave uh, for backhaul. You can see this is all the, the tech that makes your mobile phone work. Here next door, Photonics. You can see how they're, uh, they're making... Hiya. Hi. Making, making wobbly camera footage all nice and... Uh, look, I'm wobbling around. This is what's on the market now, and there's a famous man. And yeah. This is what we do. We could have the, to be used to so make sure this is more stable. Less wobble, yeah. more stabilization. Yeah. That's very good, that is. All right, so those glasses uh, let people basically change parts. Yeah, so the previous stand they had uh, basically those glasses let you let them recognize the parts that were required to uh, do repairs very good here this is a company called Radwin and they do point-to-point uh, -point residential and enterprise broadband so you can see here you got little sort of uh, dishes for fiber uh, like quality there's a lot of mention of 5g here but you, you basically get a subscriber dish and then they beam the internet to you so that's uh, the Colombian stand Uh, as you can see here, we've got Netscout on the right, uh, not at all using booth waves in any way, shape or form. They're just, they're just, they're just helpers. So we'll just, that's about it for uh, Hall 1. Also in Hall 1, um, rather inexplicably, is uh, the NBA. Nobody's really sure why they're here, but um, they are. I love little companies like this. This is Yanzu New Telecom Science and Technology Company Limited. Look, look, look. Look on the back. Should we zoom in a bit? There we go. Come on. Come on, camera. 
seek for cooperation and distribute. Oh, they're honest at least. That's what I try to get across each year at uh, the Congress. You can see here there's plenty of other manufacturers, not just the big ones. This is Shenzhen. I, I won't even try and pronounce that. It's that. They do. Hiya. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm just having a look at your phones, basically. How many do you do? You do quite a lot. Uh, I mean, those smartphones? Yes, yeah, it's yeah. smartphone. Do you do quite a few? Uh, sorry? This is our world now. Everybody just stares at phones now. Okay, so that's about it for all one. Now we're going back outside into the beautiful sunshine. Uh, the lady there was telling me that basically they make phones for ODMs, uh, OEMs. Um, so you can't actually purchase them directly on Amazon, but um, they do a wide range of phones. Let's go into Hall 2, shall we, and give you a bit of a quick guided tour around there. Okay, so uh, Hall 2 is mainly for networking side of things. So not a great deal to look at, if I'm honest. We've got uh, Ericsson, Samsung, Networks. Ericsson have a quite a large presence here, as you can see, taking up another pretty much huge space, as big as Huawei did in Hall 1. OK, so I've just come up. In between Hall 2 and Hall 3 is the studio. Google it here, of course. So this is Android's presence here at the Congress. Get a good view from up here. Yeah, I'm not totally sure what that upstairs area is all about, but they're basically making t-shirts here. Uh, and bags, rather. Okay, so this is all three. This is where I spent a lot of yesterday. This is Dell's stand. Um, and over to the right, we've got T-Mobile uh, USA. Uh, we've got NEC Sony, which is uh, where we were yesterday for the launch of the XA1 and their XZ Premium, which is uh, on display here on the stands. There's the XA1. Quite nice hands like that. It's uh, fairly mid-range, but it's coming out on um, a lot of different networks. Quite nice phone, built well. Sony always do well-built handsets. Still got the little button on the right-hand side there. Volume control, beautiful build quality on here. There's a top. I should give you a guided tour if it focuses. Specs. Amazing. You can see the specifications of this. 23 megapixel camera. That is not bad. This is the XA1. There's also a different version of the XA1. Look, bubbles. So uh, Sony is showing off the 4K HDR screen. This here, this company, Dark Matter, basically uh, provide hardened Android um, solutions, and they've got phones as well, as well called the Catim phone. Okay, this is like something out of a an old um, Superman film. Nice. Not booze babes. Not booze babes. Okay, so the uh, not booze babe has just shown me the uh, Catim. Engage phone. Here you can see all the features. I'm not going to tell you what they are because you can see them pretty self-explanatory. It's the phone itself, which is uh, let's go for the wide-angle shot. It's in this amazing lattice sort of system here. There's the phone itself. Nice, eh? Put it down. It's too secure. Yeah. Okay, so that's dark matter. And considering they're only two years old, the lady was telling me they're only two years old, they have an absolutely huge stand here. They basically offer a, a lockdown, super secure solution if you 
have um, a business and have mobile devices, they can lock down the devices and they can add um, secure communications to them. Or they can offer their own handsets, which are already locked down, which are called the CATIM handsets. Now, over here is Lenovo. You've already seen the Moto handset that uh, I looked at the other day. They're doing demonstrations here of the Yoga Book. And uh, this, this here is the Mix or the Mix. Um, gorgeous little things. Also, getting people to try these on too. Yes, yeah, so we've seen a lot about connected vehicles uh, this year at the Congress, but uh, this is the uh, Hertz, Nokia and SAP, SAP partnership. Um, they're combining to deliver basically a connected car and a rental car experience of the future. Uh, it basically means that you get car locator, uh, mobile device integration Wi-Fi, and a sense selection. Yes, you can have it smelling however you want it to smell. Uh, it's got payments, alerts, and expense and travel reporting systems too. They're very nice. Nice car too. Gets a lot of attention. Over here is something similar too. These seats will detect when somebody sits in them. And uh, it basically lets the organizers know how full the stadium is, how many people are actually in there, whether people have paid, uh, various other bits of information. Quite clever, I must admit. More not to boo -based. That's an AOL tour. Uh, um, how many people are on it? Oh my gosh, everybody. No, you don't know what you're doing. So here in glorious widescreen again is the LG stand. And you can see the LG G6 here. You can see the fact that it's waterproof. Uh, you can see the new, um, new screen, which goes all the way to the edge. Of the fan. It covers it a lot. It's done a lot of interest in it, of course. People taking photos. More not booth babes showing. Okay, so this is the LG Watch Sport, running Android version 2, Android Wear version 2. It's got a Qualcomm Snapdragon 2100 CPU, and it's got a 1.38 inch P OLED screen, which is 480 by 480. They've got 4G connectivity built into this. Um, you can see it's still quite chunky. Uh, it's got GPS and Bluetooth as well. So a Google Assistant built into this particular one. Uh, it can also have customized watch faces here. You swipe to the right, have a sleek one. Let's have this quarty one. I can't pronounce that, can you? Oh, there you go. Have a look on the inside here. Got some buttons, extra buttons here, top and bottom. Start a workout straight away by pressing the top one. Let's go biking. Start pedaling. Very nice. Let's see what else we can do. Good notifications at the bottom. Swipe, swipe, swipe. So yeah, that's the LG Watch Sport. Very nice looking thing. Uh, meanwhile over here, this is the LG Watch Style. It's a lot thinner, uh, a lot more sort of pebble-like. It feels like a pebble. Uh, just got one button on here. Uh, it's getting kind of warm at the back here. I think it's uh, probably been on charge quite a bit. 1.2 inch um, P OLED screen on here. Uh, it's got Wi-Fi. It's got no inbuilt 4G on this. You have to connect it to your um, phone via Bluetooth. But it's water and dust resistant again. Um, you can see my alarm is going off here, so I can just um, turn that off. Nice watch faces, which of course can be changed. Nice looking uh, watch here, I must admit. Very nice. It's a lot thinner than the previous one. Feels nice. Looks nice. 
you've got the uh, LG tone. These are Bluetooth headphones that come out like this. If I can get a bit closer for you, they pop out and go into your ears, and it sits around your neck. You can see the specs: Bluetooth four to um, sweat and water resistant and come with retractable earbuds and have external stereo speakers too. Okay, this was announced the other day, the LG X Power 2 5.5 inch uh, screen, 13 megapixel camera on the back, 5 megapixel camera on the front. The big thing about this 1.5 gigahertz octa-core handset is the battery. It's got a 4,500 milliamp hour fast charging battery. 16 gig of storage in, inside of it, 2 gig of memory and a micro SD card for more. So Ubuntu are here as well, or Ubuntu, however you want to pronounce it. They've got a robot 2, which is here. And I have to touch a button to talk to her. will interact with you. Hi, touch her buttons. Oh, hello. My name is Reed. I am a humanoid service robot from Powell Robotics. Like all my brothers and sisters, we run on robot too. Of course. Make sure you take my good side. So there's a lot of this going on. A lot of virtual reality. <laughs> These people don't know I'm standing right next to them. You could pretty much... You could have anything in front of them right now, they wouldn't know. Okay, so uh, over the way from that uh, telephonic stand where we saw the... Uh, uh, virtual reality, we've got Samsung's uh, stand here. Obviously, they haven't announced the G8 as yet, but um, it won't stop the stand being incredibly popular. So, we've got some photos being taken here, like demonstrations Hello. over here. Obviously, Samsung will uh, have their fingers in a lot of pies. So you've got their uh, Samsung book, the Tab S3 is over here. This is a new one. Oh, sorry, we are going to have a Okay, okay. It's sold off for some reason, I don't know, but I'm going to walk off anyway. Uh, this is Tab S3 with the keyboard and without the keyboard. guy here with a strange camera apparatus. That looks painful mate. It really does look painful. And over here. More virtual reality. Grown men. Having to be helped by other people. Please remember to share your pictures, videos and stories with us. We want to know everything about your experience. Use the hashtag Samsung MWC 2017. There's various rides here keeping uh, interest in the Galaxy Gear kit. You can see somebody being vibrated wildly over there. Can you see that? People queuing for this particular ride. The uh, not booth babes helping them out there. Huawei across the way. They are fixing their carpet, which was uh, having a bit of problems yesterday. It looks like it's a constant battle. This carpet, every time somebody walks on it, just gets scuffed. So the P10 was announced. We were at the event live. Uh, this green one is perhaps my favourite here. Very nice looking device. They flattened the hump on the back. That's gone. It's a very light handset. 
Uh, gorgeous looking thing. There's a lot of uh, improvements on the inside, such as the quad antenna here. The cameras are, as usual, fantastic. They've got the uh, partnership with Leica. Um, so it's, it's a very good handset. I like the green one. Should we just show the green one again? Look at that. The colours are really good. They're doing a good job. This was uh, outside of the Huawei event on Sunday. These are uh, uh, basically just cases. They are P10 cases though. You can see each and every one is a P P10 case. So you can see uh, the colours here and how they reflect. You see the blue on that? Very nice. These are pink actually at the bottom, but they don't look pink on the camera. People are trying to pull them off. I think one or two may snap off before the end of the event. Let's have a look what else have we got over here. More P10s. Uh, the Honor 6. Oh, Honor are here. The 6X. Yeah, so the Honor brand is a sub brand to Huawei, but uh, cheaper. And uh, very good handsets for the budget. It's got a dual rear camera on here, so 12 megapixel and 2 megapixel. It's got a good battery on here. It's got the Kirin processor, which comes from Huawei as well. Uh, fingerprint recognition on the back. So it's an octa-core CPU. It's got a 5.5 inch display. You got three gig of RAM, 32 gig of storage, or you can have a four gig RAM, 64 gig of storage version. 3,340 milliamp hour battery. Really good for the money. So this is an interesting thing which uh, perhaps has been overlooked. This is the Honor Magic. It comes with a double 3D glass for a bit of a futuristic style design. It does feel very slippery and, and just really sort of smooth in the hand. It's, um, it's got smooth corners. It's a unibody metal frame and it's got the uh, a living, it's called a living device apparently, um, acts on your presence and surroundings. I'm just reading off the notes here. That's a nice looking thing, just a minute, let's just go around. Uh, okay, so it's uh, not in English sadly. We'll just swish around it. The edges uh, go down slightly, so it does feel a little bit Galaxy S7 Edge ish. Um, so it's very nice to hold, I must admit. Quite impressed with this one. So over at ZTE they have their uh, little model village again. This time there's less trains and more sort of uh, flashing lights and water. They also uh, continue to use their not booth babes over here. Uh, to um, get people in. So we just have a look down here. So they've got the Axon 7 Max, which you can just walk up to fairly easily. 4,100 milliamp hour battery, 3D screen on here, which you can't see, obviously, but it's a 3D screen. Um, it's got an Octa-Core 2 gigahertz processor on there. Very nice looking, 6 inch display, uh, 4 gig of RAM, 64 gig of storage. Of course if you don't quite need that much um, storage you could use, uh, not that much screen rather, you could have the just the uh, Axon 7, which is this one here. Uh, all metal body, aluminium, Snapdragon quad core processor, uh, 3200. 50 milliamp hour battery, 20 megapixel camera on the back, 8 megapixel on the front, 5.5 inch screen this one, so it's a, a lot more manageable if, you're, uh, if you don't necessarily want such a big screen. We are again in effect. So down here this is the Qualcomm stand where obviously Qualcomm power a heck of a lot of the technology that you see. Onical smartphone, smartphones and uh, tablets, etc. But if we go down here, 
through the uh, mass of people, you can see just how busy it is. There's more uh, connected vehicles. Here we've got one, I believe this over here, has got uh, pothole detection enabled on it. It's got rain detection as well. That's pretty cool. So it's wind detection, pothole detection built into uh, that car. However, if we go down here, past the Alcatel stand, you'll find, well, it's TCL basically. But TCL have got the Blackberry. We're just going to have a quick look at it. It's gaining a lot of interest. Quite a heavy handset, I must admit, when I first picked it up. Uh, it's got a very industrial look to it. It's a bit of a Marmite style, I think, anyway. But uh, let's go and have a look, shall we? See if we can get hold of one. Yeah, so uh, unfortunately with the most appalling light ever, this is the uh, new BlackBerry with the physical keyboard that has returned. You can see that here down at the bottom of the screen. If I can focus in. So it's a traditional um, BlackBerry keyboard. It's got the DTEC BlackBerry solution on there. It's a four and a half inch screen running uh, the latest version of Android Nougat. It's got a Core 8 processor, Qualcomm Quick Charge on it. 12 megapixel back camera there with a flash and eight megapixel front camera. You can see here how thick it is. 3.5 millimeter audio on the top there. Volume control power here on the right. On off, on the left rather. So what's this on the right here? Ah, it's the uh, Google Assistant. Uh, then we've got the speakers down the bottom. Yeah, it's cut short slightly because of the alarm there, but you can see it's uh, gaining a lot of interest here. Another handset gaining a lot of interest, of course, is it's of course from uh, Nokia here. Their stand is pretty large, but the interest is all down one end. And the reason for that is, of course, the return of the Nokia 3310. We also, by the way, have a, a little company called Microsoft over here. They uh, just have a set of meeting rooms and that's about it. There is nothing on display at all. Uh, they have their new Nokia 6 on display here, which we've already seen. Let's see the Nokia 3 down the other end there too, but perhaps the most, uh, the most interest is down here. This is a Nokia 3310. here there's uh, less interest in the other feature phones including the 105 the 130 the 150 and various other ones and they do snake too look or some of them do uh, 222 the 216 so that was the uh, Nokia 150 running snake at 230 I can easily pick these up and some of these are actually probably better than the 3310 which everybody is crowding around you get now here So that concludes our um, sort of overview and tour of Hall 1, 2 and 3 here at Mobile World Congress. So I'm just going to go outside and get some fresh air now. Thank you, sorry. And here you can see people sitting out in the actual daylight. Amazing! <laughs>